Can somebody shout praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, that's the kind of worship that makes you want to worship. Just continue to worship. You ever been around somebody who's praying and they had really entered into prayer? That, it, created a, it creates a vortex. Whether you want to pray or not, when you get around people that are praying and know how, it, it, your desire makes you want to go with them. It's like worship. Worship creates that atmosphere. And whether you're a worshiper or not, you have to respect the idea that there's something happening powerful in the lives of people. Because we don't worship nothing we don't trust. We don't worship a God we can't trust. You can trust him. Touch your neighbor and say, you can trust Jesus. Hallelujah. You can, you can trust Jesus. Hallelujah. You can trust Jesus. I thought they were going to sing that song. There is power in the name of Jesus. Ooh. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, 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 break every chain. So when y'all singing that, then I sing my part. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. Heart trouble to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Say that again. Oh, it will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. It'll break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain. The doors will open in the name of Jesus. I'm talking to somebody. The doors will open in the name of Jesus. Them doors will open in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, 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 break every chain. Satan has to flee in the name of Jesus. Oh, he has to run in the name of Jesus. Oh, we rebuke him in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain. Say it with me. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Our children are coming home in the name of Jesus. 
Well, our family is coming home in the name of Jesus. Lord, release them in your name of Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain. Come on. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. One more time. Break every chain. 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 If you had chains broken off of you, I want you to stand and give him the greatest praise you can give him right now. Come on. Come on. Young and old, married or single, if he's ever broke a chain, whoo, praise him. If you know the freedom from sin, praise him. If you've ever been healed, praise him. If he's ever touched your marriage, praise him. Hallelujah. If he's ever made a way out of no way, praise him. If he's ever rescued you in the dungeon, praise him. If he's ever brought a habit off of your life, praise him. Whoo! You know, sometimes I feel my praise ain't near enough to give him for what he's done for, for me. Do you feel like that at, too, at times? My praise ain't near enough. It's not. My songs are not near enough to give a king who would love me in spite of me and deliver me out of all my fear and trouble. Who? Anybody in here been made righteous by the blood of Jesus? Let me see your hand. Righteousness is not achieved on merit. Righteousness is not achieved on merit or good works. The prophet Isaiah said, mine is filthy rags compared to the righteousness of God. So if you're righteous today, it's because he has imputed righteousness to you. He has given it to you. And I ask you if you was righteous by the blood of Jesus. Any righteous folk in here, let me see your hand. Because of the blood. Not because you do it right. Not because we always live right we're supposed to. But the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Listen to me. Now if you're righteous by his blood... I'm fixing to preach, but before I do, let's say, let's just do this. There's a scripture came to my mind, and I thought, hmm. It's in Psalm 34. It said, the righteous cry. The righteous cry. And the Lord heareth. And delivereth them out of all of their trouble. Now, the reason... I can cry is because I'm righteous. And the reason I'm righteous is because he cried. And he died. And he bled for me. So today, let's just participate in what we've been given the right by the Son to do. And that is cry unto God and let God hear us and deliver us out of all of our trouble. Come on, somebody. Lift your voices and tell him right now. Heavenly Father, we need you. We ask you. We beseech you. And we come before you, not with our own righteousness, but with our own holiness, not with our own purity, not with something that we generated, but something that you gave us, hallelujah, through the sacrifice sacrifice of Jesus Christ and today we cry unto you and the Bible and your word says you will hear us you will hear us and deliver us out of all of our trouble and Lord knows we're in trouble Lord knows we got trouble 
God knows that we have troubles in our life. Deliver us and continue to as we cry unto you, Jesus. Ooh. Touch up somebody on either side of you and say, just keep on crying out to God. Just keep on crying out. He's going to hear you. And he's going to rescue you. I remember years ago, back when my hair was black. That's been a while. I remember thinking about what I just told you about God hearing you and being heard from a holy God. You know, I used to thank God. If you would just talk to me, the older I got in my walk with God, I realized it don't really matter if he tells me anything it's as long as he's hearing me. Are y'all with me? As long as I got his attention and he can hear me, sooner or later he's going to talk to me. Sooner or later he'll say something to me. Hallelujah. And I remember thinking like that, and one day I began to read in devotion and actually became a sermon, a, a message that I preached all over this country year for years. And I, you know, I made it an apple pie, but I'd preach it over here and it'd have a little peach in it, and a little strawberry somewhere else. I just kind of mixed it up. But every time I preached it, somebody would cry out. Somebody would get touched and healed and ministered to. It was, it was just one of them things. And it was the thought of when the blind man cried out to Jesus and they wanted to shut him down. The Bible said he cried more louder. Even the more he cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. You can't say words like that to a holy God without getting his attention. Somebody shout amen. Whoo, we done got his attention in here today. His attention is upon us. I feel it. The, I like what the Bible says. And the Bible, it didn't just say that Jesus heard it. The, this is what I like. This is where my mind and my heart just went. He said, and he, he being Jesus, stood still. When you can get God to stop because of your cry, you're doing something then. And he stood still. Let me tell you, he's standing still for you here today. He's the God of the universe, the universe, not just planet Earth, but all of the planets. He made them. The heavens is his throne and the earth is his footstool. The whole earth is his foot, props his foot up on the earth. But that same God has filled this room. And is gentle enough to touch your heart and heal you and make you whole. Does that excite anybody else in here besides me? Mm. Well, I could tell you right now, I may not get through with all what I want to preach. Not because, not because I can't. But because about halfway through what I'm about to tell you, I'm probably going to break out in one of them fits. And I may just praise my way out and home. Mm. Turn in your Bible with me to Matthew 16. Matthew chapter 16 and then Revelation chapter 1. Matthew 16, Revelation chapter 1. Ooh. I remember the day I got saved. But I sure remember the day I got the Holy Ghost. 
any Holy Ghost filled people in this room. I'm talking about tongue talking, prophesying, devil chasing Holy Ghost filled folk. Mm. Glory be to God. Now, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's a gift from God, just like healing, just like salvation. It's a gift. One man told me one time, he said, I shouting real loud in a church. After church, he said, preacher, Jesus never shouted. I said, no, but everybody he touched did. And I said, you're looking at a man who's been touched by the hand of a man who's got nail scars in it. And I can't help but shout. Glory be to God. Y'all, can y'all handle a little, little preaching this morning? Matthew 16 and Revelation chapter 1, beginning in Matthew 16. I got some reading I want to do, but I got a reason behind my reading. Matthew 16, beginning in verse 13. Do you have it? Say amen. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Who do men... Say that I, the Son of Man, am. So they said, they said, the disciples, they said, some say you're John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. That's what the world is saying about you, Jesus. They can't, who? They can't rightly identify you as Jesus. They know you special, but they just can't put a name on you. They think you're Jeremiah because you weep sometime and you're concerned about Jerusalem. They think you're Elijah because you got power. My God, you have power. They think you're John the Baptist because you preach <laughs> like a prophet out of the wilderness. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. But they don't really know who you are. But Jesus gets personal. Touch your name and say, he gets personal. That's what I like about Jesus. Jesus gets personal with you. This is a personal relationship. This ain't about just me and Jesus and the world. It's just about me and Jesus. <laughs> if the world don't know him, I, I can't help that. I, I'm trying to tell them, but I know him. I said I know him. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter, Mr. Bowl, walk on the water. Mr. Get out of the boat when ain't nobody else will. We can knock Peter if we want to, but hey, he has, he has gumption. He has get up. He has unction. Right or wrong, he's about to spill it. He's about to say something out of his mouth that he's either going to get rebuked for or some affirmation. He says, Simon Peter said, you are the Christ. He could have stopped right there and it would have been good. But he goes on. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Now I bet all the crowd was quiet. Now what's he going to say about what Peter said? Is he right or wrong? When you're willing to take a leap of faith, there's always a word that follows your faith leap. Guess what Jesus started the sentence with? Blessed. You know you in the right spot then. Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say unto you that you are Peter. Hey, every once in a while you get so good, God will change your name. He was Simon Bar-Jonah, but now because you was willing oh, to have faith and see what nobody else has seen and say what nobody else was willing to say. Because of that, I'm going to change because you've seen my identity. I'm going to change your identity. Hmm. 
And on this rock, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Translation. All that Satan has and attempts to throw at this kingdom will not by no means overcome it. Any people in the building in the kingdom, say amen. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, Revelation chapter 1. Now, you would think I was fixing to preach on Peter and the identity. Man, you know what? I, I'm just sitting here thinking. I'm like, you know what? I need to preach a message on identity theft. What the devil is trying to do, get steal your identity. I better stop. I'm going to preach this thing, and it ain't even. I'm, all I got is in my mind. Identity theft. If he can steal who you are, then he can make you question whose you are. But when you know who you are, then you know where you come from. <laughs> the devil's on the dark web of the spiritual internet, and he's trying to steal your identity, your praise, your joy, your worship, your healing. Your he's trying to steal it all. But what's standing in his way is an agent called the Holy Ghost. Mm -mm. My name's in a book that Satan ain't got an eraser big enough to erase it out of. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let me, let me read on a little bit, and then I'm going to preach. I'm just trying to get this T-Model forward warmed up so I can get in here. Revelation 1, beginning in verse 7. Behold, he is coming with clouds. Every eye will see him, even though who's, who pierced him. And all the, the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, John said, Amen. Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Hebrew word for that is El Shaddai, the Almighty. Say that with me, the Almighty. I, John, both your brother and companion in tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I've been sent to a desert island. And I wasn't sent there because my neighbor didn't like me. I was sent there because of my testimony of Jesus Christ. But he said, even on that desert island, he said, I got in the spirit. Oh, my God. Even in that time of crisis, I was in the spirit. See, just because you're in a valley don't mean the Holy Ghost can't get in there with you. I dare you to lift his hand and say, I'm on an island, but the Lord is on the island with me. Hallelujah to God. Are y'all with me so far? I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me, behind me, behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What you see right in a book, send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira and Sardis and Philadelphia and Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. Now, what I'm going to preach on this morning is Jesus. I've come to this point. John said, I saw him. This is what I saw. 
Now, he saw him before this, but something has taken place. He has left the world, and he has become glorified. Somebody lift your hand and say he's glorified. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He said, I turned to look, and I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of them seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man. Clothed with a garment down to the feet, girded with the chest, uh, uh, the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like brass, as if fined, refined in a furnace. His voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of the mouth, out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Let me say something that may insult you, and it may make you happy. I'm willing to take the risk to do both. There are a lot of people that talk about seeing Jesus. Well, he come in my room and he talked to me. Man, he might have. But let me tell you something. When the real hair, white-haired, flame of fire eyes, burnt brass feet, golden girdle, Jesus shows up, you're going to do what John did, and that's collapse under the weight of his glory and the power of his presence and the holiness. Let me tell you. Can anybody say amen? Mm, 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 mm. Here he shows up in his brilliance. And he said, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. I fell at his feet as dead, but the most wonderful thing took place in John's life right after that. And I pray it takes place in your life before you leave here today. Because if he touch one man, he can touch another. And it says these words, but he laid his right hand on me. But he laid his right hand on me. On me. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. Can the church say amen? amen. And I have the keys of, the, of Hades or hell and of death. He goes on to say in verse 20, for the sake of time, the mystery of the seven stars you saw in my right hand are the seven golden lampstands. And the seven stars... And the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. And I'm glad that Jesus identifies what John is seeing to him and gives him a revelation of both. The angels that are there which are the messengers. And I dare say they are pastors. Pastors that have been appointed by God in each of those churches to direct them in the godliness and the ways of Jesus. He said, but I saw them, and they looked like angels. They were angels. But he said, I saw the lampstands. He said, them lampstands are my churches. They are there. Them, them, they, they, they are there. Them lampstands which you saw, they are the seven churches. You later on find out that Jesus walks among the lampstands. He's in the midst, hallelujah, of the seven churches. Though they're going through trouble, he's in the midst. Even though they're fighting Satan, he's in the midst. Even though they're being martyred by the hundreds, he's in the midst. Can I get an amen? Can, can somebody shout, he's in the midst, hallelujah. He's in the midst. My question to you is, who is this second Adam? Hmm. Woo. Give me time, Lord. Who is this second Adam? He is none other than Jesus Christ, the righteous. The Lord of history, who in infancy startled a king. Who in his childhood confounded doctors and lawyers. Who in his adulthood spoke like never a man ever spoke. In his life. Jesus who came down the prophet staircase that he had prophesied. To be born in Bethlehem, Judea. Was bullied into Egypt by Herod. Brought up in Nazareth. Baptized into Jordan. Fought a battle in the wilderness. He performed miracles by the roadside. Come on, somebody. He healed the sick without medication. 
He made wine from clear water, fed multitudes with a little boy's lunch, conquered everything that came up against him. Jesus sent the deaf home listening, the ha- oh my God, the blind home looking, the lame home leaping, the demonized lifted. He left his critics limping. Jesus took a handful of rejects and smelly fishermen, a crooked tax collector, Mm -mm -mm. and transformed them into redeemed team. That that sounds pretty good, don't it? The redeemed team. The 12 was the first redeemed team. Well, when they went with Jesus, something happened powerfully. Can I get an amen? This same Jesus went into the wilderness and faced Satan, then returned in the power of the Spirit. He went to Gethsemane, fought the flesh, and he won it right there. Jesus went to Golgotha, became sin, and he died upon Calvary. He went to the tomb and filled it with the fragrance of a thousand springtime mornings. Hallelujah to God. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about the one John saw. He stepped into the garden and declared that because he lived, everyone else of us, everyone in here and everyone who's ever came and will ever come for another million years, if the world stands, can live because he lives. Mm. This same Jesus went into hell and led captivity out. He gave gifts to men and followed up with a 40-day personal appearance to everyone who wanted to be close to him and to see him. Come on, somebody. Angels must have stood at attention up and down the boulevards of heaven during that time. As he went back to the Father, hell was ransacked. Satan's palace had been crumbled. It was crushed. Come on. Satan's head was bruised. Demon principalities were spoiled. Death was defeated. Redemption was realized. Peace was secured for every person. And leadership was ordained by God. Pentecost was certain. Truth triumphed. Mm. Justice was served. His love was revealed. Hallelujah. That was the Christ John had known. Oh, he sees the glorified Christ here. Are you with me? The gospel Christ was virgin born. The glorified Christ is a victorious Christ in battle. The gospel Christ was humiliated, but the glorified Christ is exalted Christ. The gospel Christ was meek and lowly, but the glorified Christ is majestic and he's liberated from his pain. The gospel Christ was a suffering servant. The glorified Christ is a supreme sovereign king. The gospel Christ came to shame. The glorified Christ appears in splendor. Can the church shout yes? The gospel Christ rode on a coat, but the glorified Christ will come back on a white horse. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Give me a minute with my notes. The gospel Christ stood before judges, but the glorified Christ is the judges of judges. The gospel Christ was rejected, but the glorified Christ is glorified. The gospel Christ was crucified, but the glorified Christ is the redeemer of mankind. The gospel Christ was nailed to a tree, but the glorified Christ is held on a throne. The gospel Christ was the justifier, but the glorified Christ is the just. The just God. Hallelujah. The gospel Christ was the redeemer. The glorified Christ is the ruler. 
gospel Christ ascended alone, but the glorified Christ descends with 10,000 of his saints. He went back alone, but he's coming back full. Shout amen, somebody. The gospel Christ was the prince of peace, but the glorified Christ is the king of kings. John wrote, when I saw him, mm, when I saw him, his companion, he said, I fell at his feet. I fell at his feet as dead. Then John said, I heard a voice behind me. If a person cannot find Jesus in front of them, if you can't find Jesus in front of you, you should turn around and look behind you because his voice is still calling out. Can I get an amen? He is either out front opening doors or he is behind encouraging people to go through the doors he has already opened for them. John continued. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. What John is really saying here, I was on Patmos, but Patmos became a doorway. My problem became the doorway for me to see into heaven. I just told somebody before I walked up to this platform, our valleys become the very places that God shows up and we see something about God we couldn't see outside of the flame that's licking up around us. When we're in pain and when we're in peril, there's a part of God, uh, God himself shows up in such magnificent ways we cannot see him unless we are subjected to those problems. I would not know his healing if I had not known sickness and pain. I would not know his salvation had I not known I was a sinner and I needed a savior. Hallelujah. I wouldn't know what his peace was in my mind unless I'd been confused some kind of way in my life. Anybody got any peace in here that's ever had confusion in your mind and it came? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wouldn't have known none of that unless I'd been subjected to it. And then he shows up. I was in the spirit, he said. I felt like I was trapped in my circumstances, but heaven opens up. Oh, my God. Let me just pray right now. Father, in all of our circumstances, open the heavens over us. When we see defeat, let us see glory. Instead of seeing, instead of seeing depression, let us see diligent work from your hand upon our lives. Instead of seeing tragedy, help us to see triumphant victory of the things over us. Hallelujah. While we're standing in the middle of our valleys, help us to listen for your voice behind us and for the doors that are open before us. Open that heaven over our lives and let us look into the thing. That you have for us. Hallelujah. He learned by worshiping God. That you can come close to him. Worship is the key to the door. To get you into the room of the king. Believers can transcend tribulations. By keeping Jesus in their focus. And in the sight of their faith continually. Sometimes people ask this question to me. Mm, some things I jotted down. Sometimes they ask this question to me. Have they ever asked you, why go to church? Why go? Why go to church? Mm. In a world that's full of problems and depression. Suicide and drug addiction is rampant. I'm just asking for trouble to go there. What really, what really bothers me about church at time and us, and I'm not talking about the church down the road, us. Everybody say he's talking about us. Is that we in some kind of way intend to invite them, but because we murmur and complain we wind up discouraging them from wanting attended from attending church 
to being a part of a body that wasn't created by man, but created by Jesus Christ. Hell is assaulting the world, our friends, our family, our neighbors. And Jesus said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Why do I come to church? Is it just these four walls? No. It's the fact that I have recognized spiritually that I need you and you need me. And together we make up a church and the church makes up something called the kingdom and we're put in it. And when hell tries to buffet us, we stand strong in the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. And His glory and His might. Why do I come here? Because I need strength. I need healing. I need encouragement every day. Because if I stay out there, I will be buffeted. I will be hit. I will be knocked down. And maybe, just maybe, I will not get up. But in churches where you should have a, not a hand up, but a, not a hand out, but a hand up. Look at here, people looking at the church, give me a hand out. I'm saying, I'll give you a hand up. What you need, you already got. You just need to stand on your feet and tilt your head back, square your shoulders up and tell the devil he's a lie and that I'm part of something bigger than anything else in the world. Hallelujah. That is the church that cannot fall. We got our issues. But our issues does not disqualify us if we're sincere about being in the kingdom. Lord knows the church at Corinth had its issues. God, I'm glad the overseer didn't send me to that church and preach to them because they wanted to be carnal one day and spiritual the next day. The thing about it, they had giftings, true giftings. They could prophesy and speak in tongues and cast out devils. Come on, somebody. But at times, they had a hard time with their character, getting it in shape. I'm convinced of this, that God is most concerned about my character. He give me a calling. My calling is sure. But my character, <laughs> that's something else that he has to entirely work on every day of my life. Somebody say amen. So when my character gets flawed, oh my God, he'll put me on a patmos. When, he, when, when, when I feel like I'm, I'm, I, I can't, I, I'm, I'm, getting too much of me he'll put me in a valley and, and and then i'm not talking to me i'm talking to him because of my valley somebody say amen because of my circumstances my character now is being sharpened by the edge of the sword of the spirit and the fire that i thought was going to kill me is healing me hallelujah and they're helping me to become more like jesus Why do I go to church to be here and to talk loud? Oh my God, one young and asked his mama one day after I got through preaching. She said, Mama, let me she said, Mama, let me ask you something. Who is Brother Napier so mad at? She said, he said, she said, he ain't mad at nobody, baby. He's just preaching that gospel. And some the only way I know how to get it out is tear the muffler off and run on cap headers every Sunday morning and preach it. Hallelujah. Just like John the Baptist would preach it. In the wilderness, hallelujah, I'm trying to prepare the way of the Lord and get you ready for the coming of Jesus. Glory! And if the Lord has to put us on a, on a mountain, if he has to put us on a Patmos, if he has to subject us to a valley... To reveal to us his glory and love and presence. Then so be it. Because let me tell you something right now. Too comfortable, too long. We'll begin boredom. Boredom will lead to lethargicness in the spirit. After a while you... Don't really care about anything at all. You'll hit and you don't care you hit. You'll lay down and you'll say, I don't care if I ever get back up again. You'll get sick and say, I don't care. It don't matter. I don't know if he heals again. Or not. Come on, somebody. 
I, I don't know if he heals or not. Well, see, children stay out too long. You say to yourself, well, maybe they'll just get in right at the last call. The devil is a lie. I said the devil is a lie. I'm talking about Jesus here. I'm talking about the one whose hair is like white wool. His eyes are a flame of fire. His feet like burnt brass. He's got a golden girdle on. Hallelujah. And out of his mouth comes a short two-edged sword. Oh, yeah, let me tell you something. I might not win in that ring by myself. But when my elder brother looks like that, I can't lose. I can't be defeated. I can't be shut down. I can't lay down. I can't stop. When people walk through the doors of the church, they didn't come here to see a pastor. They didn't come to hear a choir. They came here to see Jesus. I remember riding up 77 one day, had my Bible open. That's for you, for text and come. I was reading and driving. It's as dangerous as texting and driving. So I'm reading and driving. Got my Bible open. I'm crying. Got some black gospel on. Somebody say, man, they singing. I got it so loud. My radio only goes up to 10. It's on 11. I mean, it's the... Oh, 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 oh. Man, I got my Bible open. I'm shalom matanda baki. I'm shouting and praising God, getting ready for a revival. I thought, Lord, I don't know what to do. I, I'm just stole me, you know. I'm just, I mean, God touch me, help me. I know I'm, 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 I'm failing in my strength. I need strength. I've got five or ten days ahead of me, a straight revival. I know I have to pray for a thousand people. I know it. God, you got to help me touch my body. And as I was looking through the, I just happened to glance over at the scripture. And, and I read I read three words. He said, occupy till I come. That's four words. I'm sorry. My education don't go real high, so three and four kind of run together. I re looked over and it was four words. Occupy till I come. I said, God, what does that mean? He said, that's what I want you to do preaching every day of your life till I return. I said, what do you mean? He said, just occupy till I get there. He said, and when I get there, Philip, you can stop preaching and you can sit down. I'm, I'll heal the sick and I'll, I'll raise the dead. I'll touch the blind and I'll make the lame walk. I just want you to occupy. Preaching is occupied. Until the one you preaching about comes. And then he takes over. And you stay in church to 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock. Have a prayer line out in the parking lot. And people go home and tell the neighbors I had cancer till I went there. Then it rolled out on the carpet. Something happened. Went back to the doctor. Not a sale in my body. Come on, somebody. It ain't because of me. They didn't come to see me. They come to see Jesus. Are you with me? It's time that we get out of the way and let Jesus Christ be seen. It's time. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, he's the Lord of the church. I dare say at times we've taken the reins and tried to call it our church. I want it to be his. It's his. He bought, paid for it with his own blood. Y'all got a few more minutes? I got a few more words. Hmm. I heard behind me a loud voice, he said, as of a trumpet, as of a trumpet. Help me, Jesus. As of a trumpet, he turned to see that voice. He saw several things connected to the voice. Be careful. Be careful when you say, I just want to hear you. You liable to get more than his voice. <laughs> you, more, you might see more than his voice. I, you may have heard me say this as a personal testimony. I, you know, I may have shared it. I might not. I have a lot of encounters at times I don't share. I just personal things. I may share them with my wife. Some things that my wife don't even know. 
But most of the important things she does. Hallelujah. One day I come in this church on a Monday morning and I was so burdened. And it wasn't because I was had a lot of heavy stuff. It's just the fact that the spirit was burdened about the people. And I had some people that were sick at that time. Family members that were sick. And I was preaching a lot of funerals. And death was surrounding me. And there's something to be said about being engaged in death all the time. And I remember week after week I was in funerals. And I'm talking to families trying to help them in their grief. And it was tough. And come in, I had some members who wasn't quite doing what they supposed to. Hello. And so I had a burden, you know, I just burdened. And I, I got over there and, I, and, and some were scattered out. And I know people like, like I'm telling you out in different states and down in South Georgia and different places. They, they, I've got in touch with them or they got in touch with me and told me their problems. And I'm like, oh, God, this is overwhelming. And I come in here and I remember I laid right here. I remember right, and I'll never forget it, right here in this spot, right next to this plant. Didn't cut no lights on or nothing. I just come in here in the dark, took my Bible, laid it down. I got down. I said, oh, God, I don't think I said anything but, oh, God. And when I laid on that floor, I said, oh, God. By that time, I saw something I wasn't ready to really see. I said, oh, God, and out of nowhere, I saw this big old hand. I'm talking about it was like it had a shadow behind it like this. It came right there and sit right beside me like that, and it just hovering off the altar. And I looked at the hand, and it scared me. I said, oh, God, what am I seeing? He said, that's my hand. I thought, well, I figured that much out before you told me. Hallelujah. Because it's big enough to be your hand. It's showing a man's hand. Come on, somebody. When you got the hand of God touching your life and close to you, you know the difference between a human touch and a God touch. Hallelujah. And I was laying that altar, and I saw that hand. I said, God, what am I seeing? He said, that's my hand. I said, are you going to touch me? He said, it's here to touch you, but it's here to do a lot more than that. I said, God, what you mean? He said, I I'm listening to your prayers. He said, if you tell my hand to go, I'll go to... I'll go to wherever you tell it. My hand will reach wherever you tell it to reach. It'll go behind the bars of the jail cell. It'll go in the hospital where nobody can go. It'll go in, hallelujah, it'll go in Aurora when they're mental, hallelujah, and I can't get in. It'll go in the, it'll go in the nursing home where there's only time, a little time to, oh yeah. He said, tell me. He said, pray, Philip, pray and tell me where to go. Let my hand go there. Call their name out and watch what I do and now go where they are oh let your hand be upon us today oh God somebody lift your hand and say Lord touch me with your hand touch me with your hand and raise me up and heal my body and my mind You better do it right now. I'm going to seal her right here. There's a pause in what I'm saying. Let me tell you, I, I give full reverence to his word, to the word of God. Hey, call on him right now. Call on him. Call on him right now. The hand is here. His hand is here. His hand is here. Call them names out. Call them out. Tell hallelujah tell the Lord where they are what kind of condition they're in what they need what you need and watch what he does for you Holy God, holy God, holy God. Oh, there's a, oh, there's a, there's an anointing in this room right now. There's a reverence in this house. There's a, there's a God in here bigger than your mountain and stronger than your 
stronger than your chain, greater than your valley. He's in here. He's in here now. Stand on your feet right where you are. I'll preach my last little bit while you're standing. Because sitting, don't say to God nor me that you're ready to make a move. But when you stand, you say to God, I'm, I'm ready for marching orders now. I'm ready for you to tell me what I need to do. I'm ready. I'm ready to embrace. I'm ready to embrace you no matter what. There's a lot of things that I got here. I'm not sure you need all this right now. I'm not sure you hadn't had enough to convince you that Jesus Christ is real. He's the God of the church that he created. He's the Lord. But I want to say this. I've got six things I wanted to tell you. But I'll just tell you this one. And it's the one that the bedrock of Christianity and all that we preach and sing and do is built upon. This is it. Without this, Paul said, our preaching is vain. You're, you are still in your sins, he said, if this does not, has not happened. What is that? The resurrection. I said the resurrection. It wasn't enough for Jesus to die. But what sealed the contract was when he got up and walked out of that tomb. Then, ladies and gentlemen, everything that you receive from God and has been given to you has been sealed by an eternal promise. Resurrection. Everybody say that with me. Resurrection. He saw the resurrected Jesus. I saw him and he looked like the son of man. Notice the phrase. It relates to humanity I saw him he looked like the Jesus that was resurrected it relates to his resurrection when believers get to heaven the only God they will see in the body in a body will be Jesus Christ now there are some that teach only his spirit is there. But I'll dare, I will dare debate with anyone that when he left this world, he didn't leave it with a spirit only. He left it in his body. Because over 500 brethren seen him. And if that ain't good enough, Thomas said, I gotta, I gotta touch him. Hey, look at him. Somebody said, he, you know, he, he might be a spirit because they seen him walk through a wall after he got through praying, Brother Brian. He, he, he might just be a spirit. But when he got close to him, he touched his hand and he run his hand in his side. And the next word out of a man that could have been a doubter said, my Lord had my God. In other words, there ain't no doubt in my mind that he ain't just some figment of our imagination. He ain't some ghost walking around town. He ain't a spirit only. He has got a body. And when that angel told them disciples, why stand ye here gazing? This what Jesus? This what kind of Jesus? What kind of Jesus? Shout it loud. What Jesus? Same Jesus. Same. The same Jesus. Okay. He's going away. This same Jesus. Well, what can we expect to return? Will it be somebody that looks differently? <laughs> he got a shot the He's, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. He said, this same Jesus. 
that you seek go away shall return, shall return, shall return, shall return, shall return. He ain't came yet, but he's on his way. He shall return. I like this. In like manner. The cloud received him. I believe somewhere right now, and this is just old country boy thinking. I believe right now, part by Jesus is a Cadillac cloud. That cloud that's been healable, shalomakaya. That cloud that's been sitting there for 2,000 years. He said, one of these days you're going to climb back on. And I'm going to take you to where I found you and where I got you. I received you from the earth. I'm taking you back. This time, they will not spit on him. This time, they will not beat his back. This time, they will not nail him to a tree. This time, they will not put him in a bar of tomb. This time, they will not mock him in the street. Oh, no. This time, he shall come as king of kings and lord of lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And John said I saw his vesture and it was dipped in blood and he treadeth out the grapes of the wrath of almighty God I'm telling you hallelujah hallelujah he's no longer a baby in a manger he's a soon coming king <sighs> he's resurrected he's resurrected Twenty-four times in the book of Revelation, they are character pictures of Jesus. Just for heaven's sake and for hell to hear me, I want to tell you what they are. You got a few more seconds. Uh, he is called the faithful witness. Hmm. He is the firstborn, I like this, of the dead. He is the prince of the kings of the earth. He is alpha, period. He is omega, period. He is called the son of man. He is also called the son of God. He is the keeper of David's keys. The owner of the keys of hell and death. Oh, my, 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 my. Let me, let me tell you something. If, if a Jesus walks in your room and he look at him and say, show me the keys for I believe who you are. Because this Jesus I'm talking about got keys. Hallelujah. He's got keys. Who would follow a devil who can't keep the keys to his own house? Devil, give me the keys to your house. Can't touch that. Tried to hold you. Tried to keep you. Three days later, you can nail truth to a tree. And three days later, it'll come out of the ground. Give me the keys. He's the owner of the keys of hell and death. He is the line of the tribe of Judah. He is the root of David. He is the lamb slain. He is, at times in Revelation, the angry lamb. But he's also the tender. The tender lamb. He is the Lord. He is... Tracy and Mike don't like this word because the last time I spoke to them, they had a son. He is the man child. Mike said, if you come over here, we walking out the door. He told me the other day, he said, if I see you coming toward me and Tracy, we going. He said, two youngins is enough. I prophesied the first one, Sister, Sister Briley. Some, some eight years, you couldn't, seven years, you couldn't have a baby. Lord, move on us. One night, we prophesied the word of God. The word of God is power. 
powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Went inside of you, faith. Faith grabbed a hold of it. Next thing you know, oh, how they walked in my office. We got to tell you something. I said, I know what it is for you. Tell me. How they do you? You got to, you're going to have a baby. That baby was Briley. Oh, God said, I'm, I'm still happy about all that. And I ain't done yet. And while she playing the piano, he said, I want to give you a boy. And you go, it's going to be a man child. Oh, my God, my God. Let me tell you, how many women could say both of my children have come by prayer? promise of the Lord and his word. Hallelujah. Mike, if you'd like a nut, I'm in the mood right now. Tracy, Tracy might say, if he comes down here, run. You ever got a promise, and after you got the promise, you said, did I really ask for this? Did I really want this? Come on, somebody. Some of them promises are crying. Mess up a diaper. Mm. They smell some of them promises, don't they? Mm -mm -mm -mm. They don't even come with an instruction manual. God said, here it is. Pray. <laughs> He is the king of saints. He is the faithful and true. He is the word of God. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the beginning and the end. He is your morning, bright and morning star. Hmm. I like what it says when you see him and he sees you. These wonderful words from a powerful God says, fear not. Reach over and grab somebody by the hand. A strength in numbers. Satan's idea of, of victory is conquer and what now? Conquer and divide. Or divide and conquer. I had that wrong. Divide us. He conquers us. Going into this year, my number one prayer is this. Don't let any division be among us. Hey, I can handle opinions. Some people like gray, some like black, some like green and yellow, some like all kind of things. Like it hot, they like soft music, loud music, fast music, slow music. But no matter what we like or dislike, it should not divide us. Because here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say this again. Beloved of God, brothers and sisters, I didn't come here this morning to preach, just to preach to you. Do you know I can do this anywhere I want to do it? Street, Walmart, another church, another state. I come here for the same reasons you came here. And that was to catch a glimpse of that Jesus and that Christ. Did you catch a glimpse of him this morning? Did I do a good enough job for you caught a glimpse? Preaching shouldn't be the end. It's the beginning. Preaching should lead you into the subject matter. And the subject is Jesus. My preaching is not what you follow. Hallelujah. My preaching is the vehicle that I load you up on and say, now let's go in here and meet Jesus. That was my desire today. I'm opening up the doors of the bus. I like what T.D. Jake said. I wish I could have thought about it, but he's smarter, I guess. One man asked him, said, what's, up, what's church like? He said, how do you deal with all them people, some coming? And he said, man, church is like driving a bus. 
You open the door, some get on, some get off. My job is to try, drive the bus. <laughs> My job, ladies and gentlemen, is just to keep the bus moving in the direction that it should go. But see, I learned something. This ain't the only bus in town picking up people to go to glory. And I'm okay with all of that. But if you're in this church and you plan on being in this church and rooted in this church and growing in this church and worshiping in this church, this is what you've got to look forward to. Not me. Not the administration. Not a worship. Not a prayer meeting. I want you to experience Jesus Christ. You maybe heard me say this. I'm fixing to pray. When Peter, James, and John went up on the mountain of transfiguration with Jesus, they saw him like John saw him. He transfigured. That didn't come on him. That came out of him. Oh, hallelujah. Listen to this. When Moses and Elijah left the scene and the cloud lifted, the cloud. <laughs> Man, I'm going to preach on the cloud one day. Every time you see Jesus doing something, there's a cloud somewhere close to him. I bet that cloud could tell you some stories. <laughs> when they saw him transcend... When Moses and Elijah left, the Bible says this, and they looked, and they saw no man save Jesus. Let me tell you what every church should be praying, that when people walk in, they see no man, they see Jesus. We've seen men long enough. I've seen them and what they're capable of. It's time that we step back and say, Jesus, this is your. You have front and center on this whole thing. And if you ask me to do something, I'll be glad to do it. But you're not praying to me and you're not coming to me. We're all going to Jesus. And we're going to do that right now. Has this been all right this morning? I can't tell you. Just a minute. I can't tell you the last time that I stood up here and preached without pain and without hurting. But I ain't got none today. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Because I done seen him and he's done put his hand on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Excuse me while I shout, my God. I, I got to shout, hallelujah. No pain. I couldn't bend over and tie my shoes before I came. I ain't even got... Shoe strings on. That's why I wear loafers. I can't tie them. I can't bend over without my back not wanting. I mean, it just takes me a long time. But oh, my back. My back caught a glimpse of the hand of God this morning. My pain done caught a glimpse of the hand of God. He is my medication. He is my healer. He is my reward. Oh, there's something up here by me. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Grab that neighbor's hand. Come on. I know some of you said, I better hold in their hand for 20 minutes, preacher. I ain't held a hand that long since I got married. I want you to pray with me all over this room that this is a year of the greatest unity that will spark the revival that will last until the Lord returns in our lives. And no matter how much we are buffeted, we will not be extinguished or put out by anything. We will recognize every attempt of Satan to, di to disqualify us and to tear us apart. But we refuse to believe it and receive it. Hallelujah. Because we are one in Jesus. We are his body. We are his church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Come on and pray. Come on and declare it. Come on with excitement and declare that this this is your family. This is his church. This is where I get my strength when I come among those who love him and who care about him and praise him and worship him. We draw strength from one another according to Ephesians 4. Richie Proctor, run up here. Come on, run, man, run. Lift your hands up high. Two things the Lord's going to do for you today. Look at me. Look at me. He's going to take the anxiety away from you about your daughter. The hand that I've talked about is over there with her cradling her until she can get through and accomplish the mission of Almighty God. Second thing he's going to do is open up your mouth and tongue one more time to let you prophesy like you ain't never prophesied and preach his word. Hallelujah. And the devil has tried to shut it down and he's tried to keep you too busy. Oh, but hallelujah, things are about to change. He's about to touch you with an eternal fire. And it's going to leap up out of your belly and grab a hold of your... Glory, somebody, somebody bless him. Stretch your hand up. You don't need a doctor. You got Jesus, brother. Shalabakataya. I claim you healed in the name of Jesus Christ. You healed in the name of Jesus. You healed in the name of Jesus. 
They people under the sound of my voice that need a healing in your body. Grab a hold of your neighbor's hand right now. Come on, reach over if you got if you need healing. If you don't, just stay in unity with us. Agreement. If any two will agree as touching any one thing on earth, it shall be done unto them. Hallelujah. Am I right about that? Agreement is a powerful thing. Prayer and agreement is a powerful thing. I'm tired of being sick. Are you tired of being sick? Are you tired of your children being sick? Are you tired? Are you tired of your family having cancer and dying with disease? I'm tired of it. I said I'm tired of it. I said I'm tired of it. And the God that we serve is a healing God. God, right now, right now, right now, claim it with your, with your hand in theirs. Claim it right now. I claim healing. I claim healing. It's mine. Not because I'm good, but because he's a savior. Not because I'm worthy, but because he bore the stripes on his back for my healing. And I claim it. I claim it today. I claim it right now. Whoo. I claim it right now in the name of Jesus. Richard Smith, are you in this room? Is Richard in here? No, you ain't got to come up here. God said, you don't have to move out of your seat. Lift your hands up high. Can you praise him in this room? God bless you. It's good to see y'all. Hallelujah. Oh, I felt something come off. Take something home with you today. Please take it with you. Please take it home with you. Take it, both of you. Take it with you. Oh, it'll touch your home. It'll, it'll heal whatever's broken. It'll, it'll minister. Oh, my God. Jesus. Jesus. Let me just pray with you just a second. I've got to go. Heavenly Father, I sense your presence so real. Oh, it's not happenstance that they're here. To hear your word, to feel your presence, to know your love. Lord, this morning they're standing right where they need to be. They didn't make a mistake. This is, this is time and it's all right. It's all the right moment at the right time. Hallelujah. What Satan is meant for harm, turn it for the good. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Let your presence ride with them in the car. Go to work with them every day. Oh, when they return home, let them greet you at the front. Woo! At the front door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fill your lives with such love they've never known. Fill it with your love. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus. Everybody lift your hand toward Connie. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Listen to me. Y'all know her. You know her brother, Tony. They just found him, passed away while we've been in this meeting here today. You know what? I don't understand all this, but I know this. I know that hand that I preached about could have been right there. Are you with me? Say amen. Oh, God.
Every hand lifted this way, every hand, every hand. For the word of the Lord would come unto me saying this to you, my daughter. For I have orchestrated this service in such a way, even in the very beginning, that I said unto you, Cry unto me, and I would hear you. For even while you've been here worshiping me, and my word has went forth, it did not return void. For you have heard of my hand, and even my hand, I sent it this day. There are no mistakes in me, saith the Lord. Somebody bless him right now. Come on. Come on and praise him. I mean, come on and praise him.